Hello, everyone. This is Kyle Welch with RCI Wireless News. I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, The Evolution of Network Visibility Architectures, presented by Brocade. Our presenters today are Scott Heinlein, Marketing Director, Service Provider, Brocade, and Makun Srigopal, Product Marketing, Network Visibility, and Analytics at Brocade. At this time, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Scott. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Mukund and I are extremely happy to be sharing this information with you and hope you find it useful, and hopefully it will provide some good and interesting takeaways from you. Uh, before I begin, just want to spend a few minutes on Brocade and who we are in case you're not familiar with us. Uh, first off, Brocade is a market share leader in storage area networking. In addition, we're also a leader in Ethernet fabric technologies and are currently in about 90% of the global 1,000 data centers. Over the past couple of years, uh, we've realized the IP industry is going to go through a transformation, similar to the way data centers transformed with virtualization technology. So we've made recently some investments uh, specific in the virtualization area. Um, these investments um, are, are in specific technologies really to help our customers with this transformation. So over the past couple of years, we purchased network visibility and uh, I'm sorry, analytics technology, as well as uh, virtualized uh, routing, Evolve Packet Core or EPC, and Application Delivery Controller or ABC technology. And again, the reason we've done this is because uh, these technologies we believe is is, is really what our customers are going to need to make this transformation into this, into this new area um, of IP. And this is something that we and the industry is calling the new IP. So I want to quickly just set the context for the new IP. Um, but So I'm going to start off explaining what the new IP is, and then I'm going to toss it over to McCoon from there, and he's going to walk through uh, the growth of the service router analytics ecosystem, also talk a little bit about the evolution of the network visibility architectures. Um, and then he's going to talk specifically about more Brocade and the next generation visibility solution that Brocade has. And then lastly, we're going to review some of the network visibility case studies. Next slide. Thank you. So I want to just quickly set the context for the new IP, as we will be referring to it throughout the discussion today. So our industry tends to run in 20-year innovation cycles. Uh, the last major innovation cycle happened in the mid-90s with the IP and the internet wave, and it really fundamentally changed the way everyone did business, including you as service providers, enterprises, and also consumers. Now, with the rise of social big data cloud, and mobile, we are now at the forefront of what we believe is the next big meta cycle of innovation. So if you just quickly take a step back to the mid-90s, mobile was scarce. The internet was really just starting out. Web pages were mostly text-based, and IP networks were transforming the way that we conduct business. Equipment vendors really controlled a lot of what the service providers could do with their networks. Most vendors had proprietary interfaces, so there were really limits in what you could do with your network, who you could partner with for services, and really what additional devices could even be placed in the network. Now, if you fast forward 20 years, the underlying IP network is roughly the same as it was back then when the Internet was just starting. Equipment vendors still have a lot of control over the IP network. Devices are mostly proprietary and very difficult to innovate on, and you're typically locked in to a vendor when you need additional equipment. However, what has changed is that we now have billions of mobile devices on the network, billions of internet users and websites. So everything and everyone using the network has changed, but the IP network itself has not. So the IP network needs to radically transform to the new IP. And this is an IP network that is automated it's fast to innovate on, and um, it's able to transition the industry really until this, to this next wave of innovation with social, mobile, big cloud, and data. So the new IP is a platform that will help service providers establish these new business models. 
And at its very core, the new IP is a new way of doing business. It's really about transforming the way service providers uh, do business and participate in new markets. So we as Brocade really have four beliefs around what, what new IP means to us and what new IP means to our customers. The first one is around uh, the new IP is open with a purpose. And it's open with a purpose because um, it helps our customers keep pace with the rate of innovation. It reduces vendor lock-in and also reduces the overall cost and network complexity. The second belief is around innovation-centric and software-enabled. So this belief is centered on improving time to market and really the overall customer experience and customer value. The third belief is on ecosystem and then it's being ecosystem driven. And this provides the technology enablers to partner with third parties for innovative solutions and also enables external innovation. And then lastly, uh, the fourth core belief is your own pace in your own way. What this really means is that you can transform your business to the new IP at your own pace and, and in the way that you want to do it. So you choose how quickly or how slowly you want to transform it. Um, it's not up to anybody else. It's not up to your vendors. So you really have control over this. So the new IP enables rapid service delivery and unprecedented innovation. That's really at its core. Um, and in this transformation, we're going to see IP networks go from proprietary technology to open technology, from legacy hardware appliances to software that's easier to innovate on, from static to dynamic environments and from manual, mostly human-oriented tasks to automation of complex tasks. Um, and then also, you know, from slow innovation to being able to innovate in a fraction of the time. And these are really the core differences between what we've turned the old IP versus the new IP. And this will enable the delivery of the next big wave of, of business models, which include Internet of Things, machine to machine, um, and other mobile um, uh, uh, technologies to end the transformation to the digital business. And these four core beliefs that I, that I uh, reviewed, um, it really provides the foundation for, for enabling these new business models. And so Thanks, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mukund, and he is going to walk you through the rest of the uh, discussion slides. So Mukund, it's all yours. Thank you, Scott, and um, very good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening to, um, to everyone. Um, so as Scott mentioned previously, uh, the new IP drives a fundamental shift in the way that networks operate, and mobile networks are at the epicenter of this transition. So for the remainder of this hour, we'll look at some transformative trends in the mobile industry that are driving a growing adoption of network monitoring and analytics tools. We'll also explore the role of a network visibility infrastructure, which mediates traffic between the network and the operator's analytics tools infrastructure. And we'll look at the evolution of visibility architectures as mobile operators transition to the new IP. And then we'll conclude with an overview of Brocade's innovations in the, in the mobile network visibility space and um, uh, run through a quick review of some key use cases. So as we're all aware, the mobile industry is in the midst of a radical transformation. Uh, in many regions, revenue from mobile data services has surpassed voice revenue, and feature phones are rapidly giving way to smartphones. So while today about a fourth of the devices in use are smart mobile devices, this ratio is, is only expected to invert in a couple of years. The growth of smart high-speed devices and the growing demand for bandwidth-hungry content and always-on applications is forcing operators to, towards new network standards and architectures that will enhance network capacity and coverage as well as reduce capital and operational costs. To quantify the growth of mobile data, um, about 16 exabytes of traffic will be generated each month by the end of 2018. Uh, this data volume has been described as, you know, as being the equivalent of a stack of fully loaded iPhones reaching up as high as the top of the Eiffel Tower. And, um, you know, that's an interesting way to look at it. And as the machine-to-machine -machine traffic volume grows as well, uh, more metaphorical data towers would need to be erected to make sense of this exponential uh, growth curve. 
Networks are also growing in scale and complexity as they expand their radio and non-radio access footprint. And we're seeing a transition of mobile switching offices into data centers as both voice and data services are delivered over IP networks. And in this slide, we uh, look at some of the changing economics in the mobile uh, service provider ecosystem. The, um, the economics of operating a mobile network are also changing significantly as revenue generated from a gigabyte of traffic falls more rapidly than the cost of delivering that, that gigabyte. And this is really putting a tremendous downward pressure on, uh, on the service provider profitability. And this change also brings in uh, growing pains. Uh, with the changing economics of, a, uh, of operating a mobile network, uh, necessitating new business models and revenue streams that can justify the investment needed to scale network infrastructure. So to remain competitive, operators need to meet the minimum service quality expectations of their customers, which really especially becomes challenging as an increasing share of latency sensitive video and streaming traffic hit the network. And so mobile operators also need to effectively uh, secure the networks from uh, you know, intrusive DDoS attacks and advanced persistent threats as these attacks will only grow with growing traffic volumes. So to overcome these challenges, uh, mobile operators worldwide are investing in a growing ecosystem of monitoring and analytics tools that, that monitor things like usage, uh, quality of experience, service performance, uh, network security, and, and these tools also help identify new revenue streams. So these tools may either be deployed in, in regional or operational silos, or they may be deployed centrally within the uh, mobile network. And uh, most of these tools, with the exception of some critical you know, tools like security or, or traffic shaping applications, are, are generally deployed out of band, meaning that they, they analyze replicated or regenerated network traffic rather than operate in line in the path of uh, network traffic. And these out of band uh, deployments uh, mitigate the risk of network disruption, um, but, but they in, in turn require additional networking infrastructure to operate efficiently. The uh, additional uh, infrastructure that is required, which is known as, uh, referred to as network visibility infrastructure, mediates between the network and, uh, and the out-of-band tools ecosystem to deliver replicated upstream and downstream network traffic flows. And these flows are curated to the individual need of uh, you know, each monitoring tool. And now uh, we'll transition to a discussion of network visibility and the evolution of uh, network visibility architectures for mobility. And we'll specifically focus on uh, network packet brokers. Network packet brokers are um, scalable networking nodes that evolved from network taps, uh, which are either actively or passively uh, replicating network flows and feeding them to uh, the recipient of these flows through egress and monitoring ports. And uh, TAPs are, are uh, you know, depending upon their type, can both regenerate traffic as well as aggregate traffic by either, you know, replicating traffic on an ingress port to several egress ports or aggregating traffic from several ingress ports to a single egress port. But while TAPs are, um, you know, good at passive replication uh, in the sense that they don't, uh, they're not intrusive um, and uh, they don't consume network resources like span ports do, they lack the scalability, uh, the performance, and, and the traffic optimization intelligence that operators need uh, for their analytics infrastructure. So here's where uh, network packet brokers come into the picture. So network packet brokers are scalable and flow-aware nodes that support traffic regeneration and aggregation between several ingress and egress ports simultaneously. They also uh, provide the necessary performance, port density, and the traffic intelligence that operators require to support an extensive and scalable uh, analytics infrastructure. 
So packet brokers typically provide, um, you know, very high throughput and density, and they support, you know, uh, uh, advanced traffic optimization functions such as, you know, port mirroring, uh, port labeling, uh, traffic uh, packet deduplication, timestamping, and so on. And uh, they perform most of the high, you know, high-level traffic optimization functions in hardware, which really provides high performance and throughput. And uh, network packet brokers also support, uh, you know, diverse deployment architectures. So packet brokers uh, can either be deployed uh, in a distributed form, where you have uh, individual silos or, or regions in a network um, deploying their own visibility infrastructure, or they can be deployed centrally, where you have aggregation points distributed across the network that feed a central um, uh, packet broker infrastructure. And uh, in this slide, uh, I, I talk about the, the logical deployment view of a, um, of a network with, with a visibility infrastructure feeding an analytics infrastructure. So here you see a uh, either a 3G or an LTE network, and uh, you notice in the chart that um, the packet broker infrastructure is is essentially fed replicated traffic either from a tap or from span ports in a uh, network router or switch uh, uh, switching infrastructure. And um, these packet brokers offer advanced traffic filtering capabilities to, to, to minimize the compute load on the analytics tool infrastructure. So in, in, this, uh, in this view of the network, you have, you have legacy probing appliances, which are hardware-based, and, and you have legacy um, uh, packet broker infrastructure, which is also hardware-based, where, where bulk of the processing happens um, in, in, uh, in the hardware. Now, um, in the su subsequent few slides, I'll be talking about the evolution of network visibility architectures with a, with a, with a central focus on uh, packet brokers. Um, I'll, I'll walk through three generations of uh, visibility infrastructures and, 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 and talk through the evolution of these, uh, uh, these, these architectures. Um, so network visibility architectures have evolved over time, and Brocade has played a central role in, in, in driving this architectural evolution. Um, and, and this evolution, as I mentioned earlier, can be depicted in three generations. Uh, the first generation, which is, uh, you know, still widely prevalent, comprises of hardware-based packet brokers that deliver traffic to hardware-based probes. Uh, and these probes, which uh, are often a part of the analytics infrastructure, uh, receive selective flows from a packet broker, and they reduce these flows to feed the analytics platform. Um, and and in, in this first generation visibility architecture, the, the operator typically ends up uh, working with several vendors, you know, to, to separately acquire packet broker infrastructure and, and you know, probing and analytics uh, infrastructure. And uh, there is also a, a limitation in terms of how uh, flexible, programmable, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the network infrastructure is, as well as there's a lack of any functional separation between uh, forwarding and control um, processing. Some of the limitations of the first generation visibility uh, uh, architecture are, uh, you know, are seen in some existing solutions in the market today. Um, in, uh, in the first generation visibility infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, traffic is often, traffic intelligence is often concentrated uh, into specific line cards or appliances, which adversely impact the scalability and the total cost of ownership of the solution. So um, I have two different uh, architectures depicted here. And in the first one, uh, you, you see that there are, um, Several of the high-level traffic intelligence functions are centralized to specific line cards in the packet broker. Right? So these uh, line cards can, can become bottlenecks for scalability. 
even though the packet broker platform, uh, you know, offers high port density and throughput at the, at the ingress and egress levels, uh, but because all intelligence functions are centralized on, one, on, on a few line cards, these line cards really restrict the scalability and the cost of uh, applying these high level function uh, traffic optimization functions to uh, large volumes of traffic. In the second architecture depicted here, there's a similar situation, but a lot of the processing is uh, externalized to a, an, an external appliance to which uh, all of the traffic that needs to be intelligently optimized is, is forwarded. And this is especially applicable uh, in, in the context of mobile uh, traffic processing. And again, here, um, there is uh, there's, there's significant overhead in terms of the cost of uh, total cost of ownership of acquiring these additional appliances, as well as the scalability uh, of of these appliances. And again, in this in this context, you have ingress and egress cards that that, that may offer high throughput and, and scalability. You don't get the same uh, uh, scalability when you're processing traffic through this appliance, which again ends up becoming a bottleneck. And um, from there on, we move to the uh, second generation visibility architecture, which is which pioneered by Brocade, uh, where there is a separation between the mobile bearer and control processing functions. Right? So this architecture uses a software-based controller that is deployed in commodity x86 servers that reside outside of the packet broker hardware. And these controllers inspect mobility control traffic to offer dynamic programmability and intelligence. The controller also exposes APIs to the probing or analytics platform uh, or infrastructure to enable real-time flow modifications uh, that are bound to the flows that are bound to individual uh, tools. And um, Brocade also off offers a comprehensive network visibility infrastructure that, that combines um, both the packet broker uh, as well as uh, software-based probing uh, functions um, to offer the operator an end-to-end -end visibility fabric. And these, uh, the probing platform supports both 3G and, and 4G uh, network interfaces, and this helps operators minimize the complexity and, and the costs associated with integrating products in a multi-vendor ecosystem. Now, moving on from there, um, in the third generation, you know, as, as networks become increasingly virtualized, network visibility architectures need to evolve to offer fully, fully virtualized infrastructure. So the third generation of visibility architectures, also spearheaded by Brocade, introduces a fully virtualized and scalable NFE-based visibility uh, architecture comprising of a combination of virtual and, and physical programmable packet brokers, as well as virtual programmable uh, mobile network probes. So um, you'll see in this, uh, in this architecture that there is an extensive amount of pro programmability and, and there are feedback loops from the analytics infrastructure to the virtual probing platform, as well as from the virtual pro probing platform to the packet broker infrastructure. And this really offers a tremendous amount of flexibility and, 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 and dynamic flow control uh, to the packet broker infrastructure. And uh, from there, we'll uh, transition to a discussion of um, next generation uh, visibility solution from Brocade for the uh, uh, new IP. Now, Brocade network visibility solution comprises of a uh, brocade packet broker as well as a uh, brocade probing platform the uh, brocade packet broker offering comprises of <clears throat> both edge or access level aggregation uh, nodes uh, which is the icx uh, uh, platform as well as the um, mlx uh, core or, or backhaul monitoring platform, which provides uh, very high forwarding capacity with, you know, more than 15 terabits uh, of throughput 
and uh, a large number of 100 gig, 40 gig, and, and 10 gig uh, line rate uh, ports. Uh, Brocade pa Packet Broker also offers advanced traffic intelligent functions on the MLXE platform and um, offers us the second generation visibility and, and scalability uh, with a software based control infrastructure as, uh, as described in, 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 in the previous slides. And across the aggregation and the uh, core packet broker platforms, uh, SDN uh, uh, is supported for open standards based programmatic control. Uh, then th there's also the uh, probing platform, which uh, comprises of advanced software based uh, 3G and LTE probes, which uh, can scale dynamically, offer line rate packet processing for specific protocol traffic, and uh, support SDN based closed loop policy control. Uh, the packet probe platform also offers API based programmability for uh, configuration and management. Now, uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the architecture of um, uh, the, the Brocade Packet Broker platform. So as I mentioned earlier, the platform comprises of uh, both traffic aggregation and, and uh, you know, uh, core uh, traffic assimilation uh, platforms uh, with the ICX uh, series as well as the MLX uh, Packet Broker platform. Um, in addition, there is the separation of uh, barrier processing as well as control processing functions with um, a dynamic uh, mobility intelligence module that, that comprises of the controller which can uh, which receives control traffic and, and can dynamically program flows on, uh, on the packet broker platform. The uh, control and management layer also offers API based programmability of the packet broker, uh, broker platform and um, a single pane of glass monitoring uh, on the platform. And uh, some of the key features uh, of, the, of the packet broker platform can be classified in, in three layers. And, and, and I'll spend a few minutes uh, on this slide describing some of these features. So you have the foundational functions, uh, and then you have advanced uh, traffic optimization functions, and then you have functions that are specific to mobility. At the foundational level, uh, you know, these are table stake features. Um, you know, uh, Brocade Packet Brokers supports out-of-band uh, traffic monitoring. Uh, it offers many-to-many -many traffic regeneration and aggregation capabilities. And um, it also offers basic five-tuple uh, filtering of IP traffic. Um, and supports additional features like bidirectional flow mapping and uh, support for dual IPv4, uh, v6 stack. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it supports open flow and single pane of glass uh, management. Um, some of the advanced traffic optimization function support in the packet broker platform include, uh, you know, timestamping, which involves uh, attaching uh, timestamps to packets as they come into an ingress port uh, in order to give the probing platform or the analytics platform an, an accurate view of the uh, of the point of time where the traffic uh, became available to the visibility infrastructure. Um, port labeling essentially involves um, tagging the ingress port through which the, the traffic uh, entered the visibility platform. And um, this again enables the analytics infrastructure to determine, for instance, which segment in the network uh, traffic originated from in order to do, you know, uh, segment or region specific uh, traffic processing. And then there are, you know, additional features like packet slicing or packet uh, truncation, where uh, certain, uh, where the packet is truncated beyond, beyond a certain length, uh, when all of the information needed by the, the analytics infrastructure or the, or the probing platform is available within, the, within a certain uh, uh, expanse of the, tr of the packet. Um, Packet, Brocade Packet Broker also offers advanced uh, filtering capability, uh, you know, with um, with URL and 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 uh, application-based um, uh, filtering, uh, and and it can 
provide deep packet filtering going into about 128 bytes deep into, into the traffic. Um, Brokey Packet Broker also offers um, port load balancing, which means that it can, it can load balance traffic across multiple ports, uh, egress ports. So for instance, when you have, uh, say, a 10 gig ingress link uh, f feeding you know, multiple 1 gig uh, egress links, the ingress traffic needs to be load balanced across a, a large number of egress ports. And, and, and Brocade Packet Broker can basically uh, schedule a split the uh, traffic flows across uh, multiple uh, lower capacity egress ports. Um, there are additional features like um, uh, MPLS label stripping um, or, or even uh, VLAN uh, tag extraction. Uh, so these come into play when your tools infrastructure or specific tools require the underlying traffic and they, they, they do, do not need the additional overhead of having to, to uh, look at uh, and process MPLS uh, or, 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 or VLAN tags and, and eliminate them to look underneath the, the, uh, the underlying uh, packet. So uh, the packet broker offloads this capability by um, stripping out the MPLS label or VLAN tag and forwarding only the relevant inner uh, traffic uh, underneath these labels, so the the, uh, the probing infrastructure can um, essentially save compute cycles, which would otherwise be expended in, do, in, in performing these functions. Um, <clears throat> some of the other key features of this platform include a single plane of uh, uh, glass management, which is essentially a centralized uh, graphic user interface to monitor a, a, a large, uh, exp, you know, uh, distributed set of uh, aggregation and core uh, packet broker nodes. Uh, Brocade Packet Broker also offers advanced mobility functions, including smart network learning, which is, uh, which is a, um, a feature which which involves um, examining mobile control traffic to map out the topology of the mobile network. And this is spe especially becomes useful when, uh, when the visibility infrastructure is deployed in a regional uh, silo of the network where the uh, operating personnel do not have visible, full visibility into the uh, network topology. And so smart network learning offers the capability to examine these control packets and create a graphical topology uh, view of the network to really understand uh, the f flow of traffic and, and the uh, direction of traffic within the network. Um, other mobility functions include stateful uh, forwarding. And stateful forwarding uh, essentially involves um, an understanding of uh, session, session, having session level awareness essentially, right? So um, understanding session state and uh, forwarding all of the traffic associated with a with a specific session to a um, to a specific instance of the recipient tool. Um, other features include subscriber aware uh, filtering and traffic forwarding, and um, uh, another interesting feature is the flow de deduplication. And so, typically, packet brokers deduplicate. Uh, traffic at a, at a packet level. So they monitor uh, for, for a, sh a short time window, they look at uh, header patterns within the packet. And if these patterns repeat, then they detect these uh, repetitions as, as duplicate packets and drop the duplicates. Uh, but Brocade Packet Broker offers flow level deduplication. De and and this is specifically applicable in mobile networks where you have you often have the same underlying bearer traffic coming from multiple interfaces. So for instance, in an LTE network, you may have uh, S1U interface traffic as well as SGI interface traffic coming into the uh, packet broker. And a tool that needs to monitor the, un uh, the underlying payload uh, does not need 
duplicate copies of flows coming from both the, the S1U and SGI interfaces. Um, but packet brokers generally do not have the intelligence to distinguish between uh, different uh, flows coming from multiple mobile interfaces. Uh, Brocade Packet Broker offers the, the, the unique capability to detect uh, flows based on, uh, detect duplicate flows based on uh, the interfaces that they come from and, and offers the ability to drop these duplicate flows um, in, in uh, real time. Um, other features include GTP, GTP and RTP correlation, where unlike um, plain IP traffic, uh, mobility traffic comprises of, as, uh, as discussed earlier, both uh, control and, and, and better flows. So uh, GTP correlation essentially involves having stateful awareness of these flows and, and correlating the control and the better traffic flows associated with specific sessions and forwarding the control and, and, and barrier flows of, of, of these sessions to the same tool instances so that the tools can process um, flows statefully. And, and finally, uh, another key uh, feature of the Brocade Packet uh, Broker platform uh, is uh, IRAT aware traffic forwarding. So IRAT is basically uh, inter radio access uh, 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 traffic which uh, comes into play when when uh, a subscriber connected to a 4G um, base station gets downgraded or, or gets pushed into a, into a um, 3G radio access network, uh, which may happen due to, due to multiple reasons, but analytics tools may need to forward, uh, may need to look at um, 4G and 3G traffic differently. So. A, a subscriber that is being pushed from a 4G access type to a 3G access type uh, may still need to be treated as uh, either a 3G subscriber or a 4G subscriber, and 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 and, be, and, and it's, the subscriber's traffic may need to be forwarded to uh, different tools based on on the classification. And um, this this would need to be configured separately. Uh, based on the, the need of the um, analytics and uh, uh, based on the needs of the probing infrastructure. So this is uh, something that can be configured in, in the Brocade Packet Broker platform. And with that, I move to a uh, discussion of some key network visibility uh, uh, use cases uh, based on uh, Brocade's experience with various um, customer uh, deployments. The first use case is defined around the uh, challenges that operators face uh, with scaling their analytics infrastructure uh, and also the escalating costs as traffic grows. So with the growing number of analytics tools that operators are increasingly deploying, there is a need to replicate the same traffic flows to, to uh, a, a large ecosystem of tools. And so now, as traffic volumes grow, there is a need for the operators to increase the number of instances that they deploy to, of the same tools to be able to support this growing traffic volume. And, 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 and then there's, therefore, the need to load balance this traffic across these multiple instances. The challenge here really becomes that as traffic keeps growing, your probing platforms aren't evolving uh, at the same level to be able to offer the, the, the throughputs needed to, to process these high volumes of traffic. And therefore, the, the cost associated with scaling the tools infrastructure and scaling the number of instances that the operator needs to deploy becomes unsustainable. We address this uh, challenge with, with a case study around a uh, major tier one mobile operator in, in North America. And uh, re the, the problem that this operator faced was that they had to offer, uh, they had to, the, the operator had set up 
um, an analytics infrastructure that um, um, had to process traffic coming from more than 20 million subscribers. And um, they were facing significant scalability and escalating security, um, uh, scalability challenges with uh, doing security monitoring uh, in the infrastructure. And um, Brocade addressed this problem by um, deploying the packet broker platform where the operator leveraged advanced filtering capabilities to eliminate known whitelisted, uh, known or whitelisted traffic. So for example, uh, for security monitoring, the operator uh, decided that they didn't need to look at, say, YouTube traffic and Netflix traffic and only needed to focus on unknown traffic. So um, Brocade Packet Broker was leveraged to uh, eliminate known traffic flows which, which were recognized as not uh, representing security potential security threats, and, um, and 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 this traffic is whitelisted, uh, meaning that this traffic was not uh, was was um, um, was not intercepted for further processing by the security analytics infrastructure. And uh, in addition, the the Brocade Packet Broker platform also offloaded the. Uh, correlation function, or as I mentioned previously, the, the correlation of GTP and RTP traffic um, bound to the tools infrastructure. And uh, this correlation, which would have otherwise been performed by the tools infrastructure, would have consumed significant, it could consume about 30 to 35 percent of the processing capacity of the tool infrastructure. And by offloading the GTP correlation function, as well as by deploying advanced uh, traffic filtering capabilities, um, the Brocade was able to lower the total cost of ownership of the tool infrastructure, uh, specifically around the scalability costs involved by uh, more than 25%. Another key challenge um, with network visibility uh, in, in involves the need for intelligent traffic forwarding, right? So, uh, specifically in the case of mobile networks, intelligence uh, is defined around the, the ability to recognize subscriber and map the subscriber to a specific plan and then enforce traffic forwarding policies based on the awareness of the subscriber and the plan that the subscriber belongs to. Um, other types of uh, traffic intelligence involve application awareness as well as network awareness, right? So uh, with application awareness, there's a need to detect the, the type of application that's genera generating traffic in the network and forward uh, and, and make specific forwarding decisions based on the application that's generating traffic. Um, so for instance, you have specific services like uh, voice over LTE and um, um, and voice over Wi-Fi, and, and 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 these services could be detected and, uh, and 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 extracted. Flows relating to these services could be extracted and forwarded to uh, tools that specifically need uh, are built to to process um, this traffic. So in this example, a Volti uh, service quality monitoring tool only needs to receive multi traffic and not um, all other uh, you know social networking or video traffic so the packet brokers it can, can would need to detect the specific service and forward only traffic pertaining to that service to the uh, multi uh, monitoring infrastructure um, the third um, facet of intelligent traffic forwarding involves uh, network level awareness. Um, and here, uh, essentially, the, the visibility infrastructure needs to, uh, may need to forward traffic based on uh, awareness of the region of origin of traffic within the mobile network. It may also need to forward 3G and 4G traffic to different network tools, as opposed to uh, tools which support or, or, or only monitor 3G traffic only need to receive 3G traffic, and 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 likewise for 4G, and um, there is 
uh, also there may also be a need for the operator to to deduplicate redundant traffic flows uh, coming from multiple interfaces that carry the same underlying traffic, which may be encapsulated in in a in a mobile uh, uh, you know in, in an outer mobile protocol. So these are some of the uh, you know intelligent traffic forwarding needs uh, from a visibility platform and. Um, these requirements are addressed um, using uh, Brocade's advanced intelligent traffic forwarding capabilities, and, th and this is described in a case study. Uh, this is with a, an, a mobile operator in the Asia-Pacific region where the specific uh, challenge that the operator uh, encountered was um, the need to the need to, to to distinguish between traffic uh, from subscribers that belong to different data plans. So um, to provide a little more detail, uh, this operator offers um, multiple tiered data plans and had a need uh, to monitor both usage as well as customer experience for its highest uh, tier of uh, uh, data plan user. So, um, and it required uh, required a mechanism to regenerate and forward uh, top tier subscriber generated traffic to the billing and uh, network performance monitoring tools to ensure that the right level of service is provided. And also, uh, because the top tier subscriber traffic represents the highest revenue opportunity for the mobile operator, uh, there is a need to ensure that this traffic is adequately accounted for and built. The solution uh, offered by Brocade uh, essentially was um, the, the deployment of the Bro uh, Brocade Packet Broker solution to detect top tier subscriber traffic and um, flows associated with these top tier uh, prepaid subscribers were, uh, were detected by the Packet Broker platform and replicated and forwarded to the um, the billing and monitoring tools infrastructure, and the awareness of the plan um, in the visibility platform is dynamically provisioned by the um, uh, provisioning systems in the in the uh, in the operator's network infrastructure, which um, provide a plan to subscriber association uh, provision into the packet broker platform, and. The, the, the consequence of uh, this deployment was the ability of the operator to successfully monitor service level agreements as well as uh, do accurate and real-time uh, billing uh, to ensure uh, the prevention of uh, revenue leakage. The third key challenge for uh, service providers around network visibility is the need for real-time flow programmability. So there are several use cases where uh, real-time monitoring and anal analytics tools need the ability to dynamically modify inbound flows. Uh, uh, these are outbound flows from the visibility platform that are inbound into the uh, into the probing or the analytics platform. And there is a need for sub-millisecond performance um, of the API that is used to program flows out of the packet broker. Uh, there's also a need to support open standards uh, based orchestration for, for, for dynamic scale as well as uh, for provisioning and, 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 and management through an API. Uh, so in this case study, uh, we cover a lawful intercept where um, there's a major US tier one mobile operator uh, who uh, needed to deploy a lawful intercept solution. Uh, and the operator was launching a nationwide project to, to lawfully monitor subscribers um, when specific triggering criteria were met. And these triggering criteria could be in a combination of subscriber identity, the destination or, this, or the source of the traffic, and uh, the region from which the traffic um, uh, originated. So the operator required a mechanism to program inbound flows uh, from the packet broker in under one millisecond when the interception criteria were met. Um, and the operator ended up evaluating various offerings, but 
failed to find uh, a visibility platform that, that could offer the one, uh, you know, millisecond uh, programming criterion. And um, ultimately, the operator deployed the brocade solution, which was able to um, provide the and support the lawful intercept use case um, and offered a sub-millisecond uh, fast programming API to program flows uh, bound to the lawful intercept uh, solution. And uh, the, the impact of this use case was uh, the ability for the operator to successfully uh, comply with the government mandated lawful intercept requirements. And finally, the, uh, the, the fourth key visibility challenge is, uh, revolves around the need for diverse uh, traffic delivery mechanisms. So uh, the background here is that analytics tools themselves are unable to process raw traffic data. Um, so tool vendors typically uh, either build their own uh, Analytics, to, you know, uh, infrastructure vendors typically either acquire or build their own probes, or they partner with with probe vendors, and these probes generate metadata uh, that is used by the big data uh, platform to do its uh, analytics function. And now, different big data platforms, the different analytics platforms, require traffic to be delivered to them in in in, in different formats. Um, some platforms require uh, you know, so, some platforms come with uh, probes that can handle raw, you know, protocol-specific raw traffic, um, whereas other analytics platforms, you know, that don't come with a probe offering uh, require either batched uh, metadata, either in CSV formats or, you know, other uh, reduced uh, data formats. And uh, and then other uh, analytics platforms require streamed metadata, so they, they need, they need tra the metadata to be generated and streamed uh, to the uh, uh, analytics infrastructure as and when the data uh, becomes available to the visibility platform. With the brocade uh, offering, there is the singular ability to um, provide an end-to-end -end visibility solution uh, from a single provider where uh, the packet brokering or the traffic aggregation and regeneration and advanced uh, filtering and forwarding functions, as well as the traffic reduction capabilities are all offered from one visibility platform. And uh, this is uh, explained with a use case around a uh, US tier one mobile operator who was deploying a, a, a leading big data analytics platform. And the operator needed uh, an end-to-end -end network visibility platform, which could perform traffic extraction as well as um, the delivery of traffic to um, a probing platform um, comprehensively. And the solution offered by Brocade here um, was uh, a comprehensive network visibility platform spanning packet brokers as well as a uh, probing platform. Um, with the programmability that came uh, with these platforms. So the operator was able to successfully trial the, the visibility solution, which combined the packet broker as well as the probing uh, platform. And this helped uh, deploy an end-to-end -end traffic delivery solution that uh, really minimized integration costs as well as reduced the deployment time uh, associated with uh, the deployment of the big data analytics infrastructure. So um, with this, we've uh, covered all of the key uh, challenges and, and, and the use cases uh, delivered by Brocade associated in responding to those challenges. And um, that brings us to the end of the uh, presentation. Um, in summary, um, Brocade plays a leadership role in the new IP uh, era and uh, provides a path for uh, mobile operators to be able to transition to open uh, and software-based automation-enabled architectures that foster rapid innovation. And uh, mobile networks in the new IP era contend with 
uh, exploding traffic volumes and operators need to deploy diverse monitoring and analytics tools to enhance service experience, application performance, security, as well as monetization. And Brocade is really driving the evolution of network visibility architectures to provide the, the scale, performance, flexibility, and intelligence required by new IP networks. And um, we also looked at several use cases that describe the benefits of the Brocade solution in addressing the visibility needs uh, of various service providers uh, in various scenarios. So um, with that, um, I wrap up my, uh, my presentation. Thank you for your, uh, for your attention and your time. And um, uh, we can open the forum up to questions if, if there are any. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mukun. This is Scott. Um, I just wanted to um, real quick just um, give um, credit. There was a slide in, um, in our deck, it was slide 11, um, in which uh, Sue Rudd from Strategy Analytics had actually created. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her um, that we should have credited that slide to her. So um, anyway, um, Kyle, I'll toss it back over to you. All right. Thanks, Scott. And um, yes, thank you for making that announcement. Um, Everyone, uh, we don't have time for too many questions. We'll get to one, but if you have any questions, please submit them into the control panel, and Makun, our presenter today, will get those. So Makun, I think uh, we have time for one question. So um, on slide 25 under key features, um, can you provide more information on flow deduplication and IRAT aware forwarding? Sure. So um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, flow deduplication uh, really comes into play when uh, in, in a mobile network there is redundancy between uh, barrier traffic coming from multiple interfaces which have the same underlying uh, uh, packets. So the example again here would be uh, redundancy between um, uh, S1U and um, um, SGI uh, interfaces uh, in, in the case of an LTE network. So the, the, the need for the deduplication in some cases arises because it's essentially the same underlying traffic in these, in these multiple protocols, but in the uh, S1U interface, there is uh, the uh, GTP uh, layer around the barrier traffic, uh, but <clears throat> tools that are not interested in the actual performance of the, um, of the interface uh, and that only need to have visibility into the underlying uh, inner GTP traffic um, can leverage this feature to to essentially uh, deduplicate de or, or or eliminate flows uh, uh, from the SGI interface or from the SVNU interface and only receive flows from one of those two interfaces. And this comes from the recognition of the of the duplicate flows across these two different interfaces. Um, with IRAT uh, aware, aware forwarding, again, I covered this uh, briefly earlier, but um, when, <clears throat> when, when there's a transition of a subscriber connection from uh, a 4G access, uh, network access type to a 3G access type, um, <clears throat> tools that are configured to receive um, 4G traffic only uh, um, may not receive this traffic and and the visibility uh, infrastructure can mitigate this situation where the tools need to have visibility of the traffic even though it was offloaded to a 3G access type. Um, the Brocade solution can intelligently detect this, uh, this, this inter-radio access type uh, uh, offload and, and nevertheless forward the offloaded flows to the 4G um, tools infrastructure. And so this really enables intelligent uh, radio, uh, you know, access and network-aware traffic forwarding. And with that, I think we're out of time. Um, so yeah. Kyle, I'll hand it back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, The Evolution of Network Visibility Architectures, presented by Brocade. Again, our presenters today were Scott Heinlein, Marketing Director, Service Provider at Brocade, and Makun Srigopol. Mar product Marketing Manager, Network Visibility and Analytics at Brocade. Thank you, Scott and McCoon.